So you've probably seen the hype around mind-blowing AI image editors with projects like Google's Nano Banana letting you edit photos with just a text prompt. It's wild stuff. But what if you could do that for video? Well, the open source community has just dropped an absolute bombshell that does exactly that. I'm calling it the Nano Banana for video, but its real name is Lucy Edit. This is a massive deal because Lucy Edit is being presented as the world's first open weight foundation model for text guided video editing. That means the code, the model, everything is out there for the community. It allows you to perform incredibly precise edits on a video, changing clothes, swapping characters, transforming the entire scene, all from a simple sentence, without needing any complex masks or manual editing. The paper claims it nails four key things. It follows your prompt, it preserves the subject's identity, it keeps everything consistent across all the frames, and the final result looks realistic. That's a bold claim, so let's see if it holds up. First, let's analyze the showcase examples on their project page. We'll start with this video of a woman turning. If we give it the prompt, put the woman in a red bikini with an open, thick coat above it. Just look at the result. It has put her in a red bikini and placed a coat over her. If we do a side-by-side -side comparison, her face is exactly the same. There's no difference at all. It has only changed the clothes. Crucially, the movement of the character is also identical. Similarly, if we give it another prompt, put her in a clown outfit, you can see it has put the same girl in a clown outfit. Here too, her face is identical, the movement is the same, the background is the same, everything is preserved. It has precisely changed only her dress. Then let's try another one. Put the woman in gothic black jeans and a leather jacket and a crop top under it. You can see how amazingly it has given her a jacket and jeans and even put a crop top on her. Everything else, like her face, is exactly the same. So this is a very cool and amazing new tool. And it doesn't stop at clothes. You can also completely change the subject. If you give it the prompt, make the woman into a lizard, you can see a lizard has taken the place of the girl. Pay attention to the lizard's hands and its fingers. They aren't human fingers at all. But the circular motion it's making is the same as the girl's. It has only changed the subject while preserving the motion. Let's change the example here and look at another case with many variations. Here we have a man with headphones around his neck who then puts them on. If we give it the prompt, make the man into an alien, you can see that the man has been converted into an alien. The subject has been completely changed, but the headphones are the same, and he lifts them from his neck to his ears in the same way. This is also very impressive. Then if we want to change him into a polar bear, you can see it has some difficulty here because the headphones have disappeared. The polar bear has taken the subject's place and the background is the same, but the object interaction is lost. Now, using the same initial video, if we give it the prompt, transform the scene into a snowy scene, you can see that snow has started to fall. So you can do this kind of environmental editing as well. And here if we give the prompt, put the man in a tuxedo. It's the same man, same headphones, only his dress has been changed to a tuxedo suit. Here's another example with a girl smiling at the camera in a cinematic scene. If we give it the prompt, a tiger has attacked this woman. You can see two tigers are standing behind her. They aren't attacking, but it has added two tigers into the background. This is a bit more complex for the model. And to be fair, no AI video model can properly generate a complex action like an attack right now. Overall, this is still a good generation. And if we want to change the style to anime princess, you can see that it has converted the same girl into a 2D anime style character. If we give another prompt, replace her clothes with knight armor, you can see that now her clothes have been changed to armor, but her face and the background are exactly the same. The prompt, change the outfit to a white crop top with no sleeves, however, shows a limitation. It put her in a white crop top, but you can clearly see it has sleeves. So here and there, it lacks perfection because this is the first version, but still, it's quite impressive. Now look at this beautiful scene of a girl with the sea and a ship behind her. She's wearing a white top. If we give it the prompt, put her in a Manchester United jersey, you can see that it has converted her clothing into the jersey. Everything else is the same, and if we want to convert this into a Lego style, the woman has been converted to a Lego figure, which is also a great style change.
With the prompt, make her into Harley Quinn with the outfit and makeup, you can see that it has changed her makeup and outfit to be like Harley Quinn's, a very impressive result. And this one, make her hair ginger. You can see that it has just changed her hairstyle, leaving the dress and everything else the same. Let's check out one more set. Here is a woman standing in a bedroom. If we prompt, put the woman in a red blouse and white skirt, you can see that it has dressed her accordingly. Then put the woman in jean shorts and a white crop top. It's done that too. How about put the woman in a tuxedo? You can see that it has dressed her in a tuxedo. And then if we want to put her in a bridal dress, the model has dressed the same girl in a bridal dress. The subject identity holds up incredibly well across these drastic clothing changes. Finally, you can see these side-by-side -side comparisons where a girl in a bathtub is replaced by a polar bear holding the same wine glass, or a dolphin is added to the scene with her. These comparisons really highlight how everything else is mostly the same, the face, the movement, everything. It just changes the things it was told to change. Okay, so those are the official examples. Now, for the demo they have provided, you can see it says start free with 2,000 credits. You just have to sign up. So I'll sign up and then I'll show you how to run it. So look, I've logged in and I got 2,000 credits. First, I'll upload my own character, Bigfoot, in a small four-second clip. I've given it the simple prompt, Add Sunglasses. A 720p generation with the Pro model costs 150 credits. Let's see what kind of result it gives. Okay, the generation speed is quite fast. It finished in about 20 seconds, but you'll notice a bit of a quality issue. It has added the sunglasses, but the quality has dropped a lot. For 720p from the Pro model, this kind of pixelated output is a bit of a letdown. Next, for a bit of fun, I'll select the original video again and give it the prompt, put the Bigfoot in a red bikini with an open thick coat above it. Let's generate this and see. Okay, so our result is here, and you can see that it has generated a Bigfoot wearing a red bikini and a fur coat. But this is not the Bigfoot that I added. The face of my character has been completely changed. This shows that the official examples are definitely cherry-picked. Let's try one more. I'll reselect my original Bigfoot video and give it the prompt, Make it snow. Now let's see what its result is like. Okay, so you can see that our character is almost similar to the original. There are some minor issues, but it has added some really heavy snow here, so this is quite a good generation. Let's check one last prompt. I'll select the original one again, and the prompt is, make him into a 2D anime style character. So look, it has converted our Bigfoot into 2D anime, but this isn't Bigfoot, it's some other human-like anime character that has appeared. So there are some clear flaws here in my testing. It's possible that it works better with more realistic human characters. So after all those examples and tests, let's get into the part that I find most fascinating. How does this actually work under the hood? What makes Lucy Edit different from previous attempts at video editing? The paper explains that the model is built on a foundation called a Rectified Flow text-guided video backbone. Rectified Flow is a relatively new and more efficient way of training generative models, but the real secret sauce, the core innovation, is a technique they call editing via channel concatenation. Let me break that down. First, the original video is converted by an encoder into a compressed, latent representation. The model then starts with random noise that will become your edited video. Now, here's the brilliant part. At every single step of the denoising process, it takes the current half and finished video data and literally staples the compressed data from your original video right alongside it. This process of concatenation means that the main part of the AI, a diffusion transformer, is constantly being forced to look at the original video's blueprint while it works on the new one. And here's a key detail for those who follow the space. The core of this architecture is based on the powerful WAN 2.2 5 billion parameter model. This is significant because WAN 2.2 is already a very capable and well-regarded open source video generation model. Lucy Edit essentially takes this powerful base and cleverly adapts it for high-fidelity editing. This direct alignment and powerful foundation are incredibly effective. It's the reason the model is so good at preserving the subject's identity, keeping the background stable, and matching the original motions so precisely.
Now, as for the rest of the details for all of you who want to get your hands on this, if you go to its GitHub page, they have released the code and the model weights for what they call Lucy Edit Dev. This is the open weight model for the research and developer community. The more powerful version, likely the one powering the online playground, is called Lucy Edit Pro, which is available via an API. One of the most exciting pieces of news on their GitHub is that they're going to integrate it very soon into Comfy UI. For anyone who works with local AI generation, you know this is a game changer. It means we'll soon have custom nodes that will allow for building complex, repeatable, and powerful video editing workflows right on our own machines. The GitHub page also confirms the capabilities this architecture enables. Things like motion preservation, where the original movement is kept perfectly, and high edit reliability. And it breaks down the types of edits you can do, changing wardrobe and accessories, full character swaps, and scene swaps to change the style, all driven by simple text instructions. To get the best results, they've also provided a prompting guide. You need to use specific trigger words. For example, use the word change for modifying clothes, add for inserting new objects, replace for swapping the subject, and transform for style transfers. They also note that prompts work best when they are concise, ideally between 20 to 30 words. Finally, the big question, what kind of hardware do you need to run this locally? Since we know this is based on the WAN 2.2 5 billion parameter model, we have a very clear idea of its requirements. Models at this scale, especially for video processing, are demanding. To run this effectively, you're going to need a GPU with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. For more comfortable use, like generating longer clips or at higher resolutions without running into out-of-memory errors, a card with 24 gigabytes of VRAM is a much more realistic and recommended target. I'll have all the links you need waiting for you down in the description so you can go and try this out for yourself. I'm genuinely curious to see what you all think, so definitely leave a comment below with your thoughts. As always, if you enjoyed this deep dive, hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel really helps more than you know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.